Welcome to our St. Patrick's Day and color story time. So today I'm wearing green because that's the St. Patty's Day color. And then I'm also wearing blue. So if you can look at your shirt and tell me what color you're wearing, I would love to know. All right, so we're probably wearing all sorts of colors today and colors make up a rainbow. And we are going to read two stories about rainbow colors. So this one is a Winnie the Pooh story called Rainbow Colors. And then we're also going to be reading When You See a Rainbow. And then, because it was St. Patrick's Day this week, we're also going to be reading about Lucky Tucker, who is a lucky dog, St. Patrick, and the Three Brave Mice. So we're going to get started first with when you see a rainbow. After Noah's flood and the days gone by, God's painted rainbow appeared in the sky, a sign to all who believed in him that he never flood the world again. A dazzling watercolor in seven shades, reminding us of the promise God made. Ribbons of red, orange, yellow, and blue, green, violet, and indigo. With this palette of brilliant hues, God has painted butterflies too. And the purple flowers in the forest beds and the strawberry sweet and juicy reds. And the golden feathers on a chickadee and the rainforest lush and green leafy greens and the bright blue seas of the Caribbean and the peacock and the chameleon God's masterpieces are all around in the air in the water and on the ground You can taste them, touch them, and hear their cries. You can smell their scents and look in their eyes. But when you see a rainbow way up high, remember God's promise and the reason why. Okay, our next story is called Rainbow Colors with Winnie the Pooh. And take her too. It's fun to learn. As Tigger and Rue were drawing pictures at Pooh's kitchen table, Pooh looked out the window. The rain stopped, he said. Let's go outside and play Pooh sticks. I'm with you, buddy. Buddy Bear, said Tigger. We've been inside so long, my bouncer's starting to lose its spring. So Rue, Pooh, and Tigger bounced happily into the wood. The rain washed the trees and flowers, and they looked bright and fresh. And as the clouds parted, everything sparkled in the sun. But the best thing they saw was just ahead. They're friends. Hello, Eeyore. Hello, Rabbit, said Rue. They were already playing by the bridge. Ah, now Tigger, Rue, and Pooh can play Pooh sticks with us, said Rabbit happily. Rabbit began to gather three more sticks as he invited the others to join. Eeyore sighed. Just don't blame me if it rains again. With that, Rabbit quickly handed the sticks out while Pooh and the others took a spot on the bridge. One, said Rabbit, and everyone leaned over the railing. Two, out went the sticks. Three, splash, the sticks floated down away before disappearing under the bridge. Rue was the first to see them come out on the other side. There's mine, he shouted. Do you happen to see my stick, asked Tigger. I see something even better than all the poo sticks put together, said Pooh, as he pointed upstream. Look at all those lovely colors, said a surprised rabbit. It's a rainbow, Rue shouted excitedly. It's red, said Pooh. It matches my shirt. I like purple, said Rue, and he giggled. Purple, slurple, whirple, turple. Just then, Tigger spotted Owl flying overhead. Hey, big lips, Tigger shouted. Look behind you. What? Owl replied from above. I say, I can't hear a word. 
Look behind you, Tigger shouted again, pointing at the rainbow. But by the time Owl looked up, it was too late. The rainbow would, had already faded. You missed it, bird boy, said Tigger. It was a giant stripey thing in the sky, and as a full of colors, and kind of like a Tigger. Woo hoo hoo! Yes, yes, you saw a rainbow, said Owl. It's a shame I missed it, because I do enjoy rainbows, said Owl a bit sadly. And with that, he flew off, feeling a bit left out. The friend sensed a hint of sadness in Owl. Hey, fellas, said Tigger, what do you say we go find some colory, colorful things and bring them back to old Beak Lips to cheer him up since he missed the rainbow? So the friends set out through the wood looking for colors all around. And indeed, there were colors everywhere. Yellow ducks, green leaves, red birds, and purple butterflies. Hum ti tum tum, what a clever color finders we are, said Pooh as he eyed some pretty purple butterflies. Meanwhile, Roo spotted some red feathers and bounced quickly after them, but each time he got close, the wind whooshed and whooshed and pushed them away. Pooh saw a grasshopper. He followed it as it hopped to a patch of green clovers. Pooh, cried Rabbit, you found four-leaf clovers. So I did, said Pooh, feeling rather clever. My lurkers must be broken, said Tigger, rubbing his eyes, or some... Someone forgot to sprinkle orange over this side of the wood. I've looked left and right, saw something white, but nothing orange. Oh, Tigger, said Pooh, pointing to some poppies on which Tigger was bouncing. Perhaps you should look down. Ho, 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 shouted Tigger. I've got all hoppy and found some poppies. Finding orangey things is what Tiggers do best after all. Eeyore felt gloomy because he hadn't found anything blue yet. First, Eeyore felt gloomy because he hadn't found anything blue yet. So to forget his troubles, he sat and thought about lunch. With no thistles around, he helped himself to some berries. When he looked at his paws, he realized he'd found something blue after all. I doubt it if anyone noted, will notice, said Eeyore, but everyone did. Meanwhile, Rabbit looked for something yellow. Aha, he said, discovering a corn patch. When the husks are torn, there's yellow corn. Ta-da! Everyone gathered together with their colorful objects and spread them out. What a magnificent display of colors, said Tigger. I do believe we're ready to bring Owl his rainbow, the rosy red feathers, bouncy orange poppies, yummy yellow corn, lucky green clovers, and bright blue berries, said Pooh, all the colors of the rainbow. Well, almost, said Eeyore, we're missing purple. It's going to be tough trying to round something up now, said Tigger. We've already turned the wood topsy-turvy versy vicey. Bother, said Pooh. I guess we're just not such clever color collectors after all. Hello, everybody, called Piglet, who was just coming down the path. Piglet, said Pooh. Then he exclaimed about the rainbow and the missing color. Perhaps I have something that will help, Piglet said, reaching into his basket and pulling out a big bunch of pretty purple petunias. Hooray, Piglet saved the day, cried Roo. I did? said Piglet, hopefully. He'd always wanted to do that. Come on, Piglet, old pal, cried Tigger. We're making a stripey, surprisey rainbow for Owl. And now that we have all the colors out of Pooh, we can finish it. So off they went to surprise Owl. When they got there, everyone laid out their objects neatly on the ground, forming a beautiful rainbow. Let me see. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. It's been differous, said Tigger as he bounced up to call on Owl. Hiya, Big Glips, it's me and us, and we got something to show ya. But there was no answer, so Tigger knocked tap a tap tap, but Owl wasn't home. Ugh, all that work for nothing, said Eeyore. Suddenly Owl landed on his porch. What's all this about, he asked. Since you missed the rainbow, we decided to bring it to you, said Pooh. Splendid, said Owl. 
Why don't you come up and see your handiwork from my view? The friends looked down from Owl's house and felt very proud as they admired the colorful rainbow they had created. Owl expressed his thanks. Oh, I say, that's exactly what good friends are for. Our next story is about a little dog, a little white dog. And these are called Highland Terriers. When Tucker woke up on St. Patrick's Day, he got off on the wrong paw. First, he had to go for a walk in the rain. Then his favorite squeaky toy got stuck under the couch. Just when he thought it couldn't get any worse, a black cat hissed at him. My luck needs to change, thought Tucker. What if I roll in this bed of clovers? Maybe their luck will rub off on me. Little did he know that he was being watched by a leprechaun. You just rolled in my bed of four-leaf clovers, the leprechaun said. Now you'll be the luckiest dog around. And he ran off. Tucker chased after the leprechaun, but he got sidetracked when he saw a boy licking an ice cream cone. The top scoop was about to fall off. Tucker made the catch. Wow, what a lucky dog, the boy said. But now, by now, the leprechaun had disappeared, so Tucker decided to go to the dog park. Today was his lucky day. He got to play and wrestle with all his best friends. On his way home, Tucker passed by the bakery that sold some homemade dog biscuits. Aren't you a lucky dog, said the baker. I've got a peanut butter shamrock, a chicken-flavored pot of gold, and a cheese-flavored horseshoe just for you. When Tucker arrived home, the mailman was delivering a big box. You're the luckiest dog I know, said the mailman, because this box is for you. Tucker tore open the box and jumped inside. His owner said, Lucky Tucker, you were supposed to have a bath tonight, but let's play with your new toys instead. Oh, there's one more page. Finally, it was time for Tucker to go to bed. It was his luckiest day ever. He was already dreaming about the next St. Patrick's Day. All right, and our last story is actually a story about St. Patrick himself and three brave mice. St. Patrick and the three brave mice. Many years ago, St. Patrick traveled the roads and byways of Ireland, driving out the snakes with a bell. But one crafty, clever snake escaped. This snake slithered through the meadow in the forest, day and night, hunting for tasty mouse meals. One night, three little mice, Ryan, Brian, and Tula, cuddled in their nest. Ryan and Brian soon fell asleep, but Tula was restless. When the moon rose high, she scrambled from the nest. Light as a whisper, she skittered up her favorite hill. She snuggled into a leaf and gazed up at the stars and the moon, listening to the night sounds. She heard a loud snore. She looked down the hill. There, under a tree, a man slept. A bell glowed at his side. Tula's whiskers twitch. Could it be St. Patrick and his miraculous bell? Then snakes slithered from the forest. Tula hid behind a mushroom and peeked out. Snake seized a handful of grass, or a mouthful of grass. He inched his way to the bell and poked the grass around the clamper, clapper. Time and time again, he stuffed grass into the bell. When he had finished, that crafty, clever snake slid his tail through the bell's handle and stole it away. Tula had to save the bell. 
She scurried after the snake, following him to his lair. The snake coiled up around the bale, bell and sleepily closed his eyes. His forked tongue darted in and out. Was he dreaming of mouse meat? Tula darted back to the nest. Wake up, she cried. Snake snowed St. Patrick's bell. You had a nightmare, Ryan said. Tis your imagination, Ryan's, Brian said. You're daft, they said together. No, get up, Tula insisted. I have a plan. Grumbling, Ryan and Brian followed Tula to the hill. They looked down and there was St. Patrick snoring under the tree, but no bell. Tula led them to the snake's lair and whispered her plan. The three mice scattered and gathered long grasses. They braided a rope. Now one of us must tie the rope to the bell's handle, Tula told them. You're the smallest, Ryan said. And the lightest, said Brian. And the quietest, they said together. Trembling, Tula grabbed the rope with her teeth and dragged it toward the bell. Just as she was about to loop the end of the rope through the bell handle, Snake's tongue darted out. Tula didn't move. Not a whisker. Snake settled back into sleep, and Tula tied the rope, and the three mice tugged the bale back to St. Patrick. Blade by blade, they removed the grass. Tula was about to snatch the very last blade when Brian squeaked, Snake! Quick as a wink, Tula clutched the bell's clapper. Stand the bell up, she cried. Slate snake slithered closer. Ryan and Brian pushed the bell upright. Snake hissed and reared his head. Sss. Tula swung on the clamper. Bong! St. Patrick sprang to his feet. Tula scampered out as he snatched up the bell. Then St. Patrick rang his bell. Bong, 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 and drove that crafty, clever snake to the sea. Hip, hip, hooray, Ryan, Brian, and Tula cheered as snakes slithered into the water and disappeared from Ireland forever. And that is the tale of the three brave mice who helped St. Patrick drive the last snake from Ireland. And that's the end of our story time today. We'll see you guys again next week. Have a great weekend.